What's up tech tuner, PC builder, AMD lover or Intel lover? Uh, basically, I just want to give you guys some tips on my 1700 build that I recently built it and I know you guys been waiting for the benchmark maybe and you, might, you guys might be thinking what's wrong with Sony is waiting so long for the benchmark and stuff and why he's not showing. So basically guys, I don't want to run the benchmark for my Ryzen 1700. Uh, at least overclocked to 3.8 gigahertz or 3.9 gigahertz. As you guys can see, I still have a stock AMD Ryzen cooler, and I'm not so happy about that because I still didn't receive the M4 bracket from Corsair, and I'm not so happy about that. But I can't do nothing about that. I have my Corsair H105 cooler just laying around. I also have my Kyrie A80 cooler, but I still don't have a bracket, so. I managed to overclock the CPU with stock cooler uh, all the way up to like 3.8 gigahertz but I wanted to push it more but I don't want to reach the CPU with this stock cooler because the temperature jumps really high I mean really high 3.8 gigahertz at least with 3 uh, 3 point uh, 3 point three uh, uh, bolt and uh, the temperature basically while I render and stuff or running like handbrake and stuff jump all the way up to like sometime like 80 plus and I want to stay under 80 uh, Celsius so basically I want to give you guys some tips today and I hope these tips help you now first thing guys if you guys are planning on building a Ryzen 7 1700 build and uh, you're planning on going with uh, like you know x370 motherboard and you are or even with uh, B350 but I don't think uh, there is uh, any B350 out there that comes with dual BIOS maybe I could be wrong but if you are getting a X370 a Ryzen motherboard get a motherboard with dual BIOS so if you are someone who is planning on overclocking the CPU I really recommend you guys get a motherboard with dual BIOS because trust me if you are keep playing with your BIOS, you keep trying to overclock the RAMs, if you are keep playing with the XMP profile and if you are keep trying to overclock playing with the voltage, most of the people out there, they are breaking their motherboard. Because if, if the motherboard only have one BIOS, once the motherboard like the BIOS break, that's it. But if you have a motherboard like MSI X370 motherboard or ASUS uh, X370 Crosshair motherboard or if you have the Gigabyte motherboard, the one I have right here, X370 uh, Gaming 5 motherboard. Now this motherboard comes with dual BIOS, so I can manage to break one uh, BIOS and then I can just uh, switch from you know number one BIOS to number two, and then I can you know you know run everything again, and also I can fix the number one BIOS from the number two. So definitely recommend you guys go with uh dual bios x370 motherboard make sure check that before you buy the motherboard now as you guys remember i made my last video about the gigabyte uh x370 uh, gaming 5 motherboard that motherboard gave me really really like bad headache now i know there's something stupid i missed it and i didn't realize so I did break one of my BIOS, right? And I didn't realize this motherboard comes with two BIOS. Now this is so stupid because I showed you guys in one of my video, like unboxing video, that this motherboard does come with dual BIOS. So basically what I did, I just uh, switched the BIOS from BIOS 1 to BIOS 2, and then I flushed the BIOS 1 from the BIOS 2, and now the motherboard running perfectly uh, fine. And also I did order another gigabyte motherboard that uh, I have to uh, box it and return it. Now I have uh, two of this motherboard, uh, gigabyte AX370 uh, uh, gaming 5 motherboard. Now, so also another thing I wanna show you, basically uh, if you guys are uh, like someone, uh, like I know a lot of you are out there, like you, like to run every benchmark like Cinebench, Geekbench and everything. So if you are someone who is running, you know, who is uh, running uh, Geekbench 4 right now on Ryzen uh, CPUs, the Ryzen CPUs are not optimized with Geekbench 4. I'm just telling you guys right now and I can show you guys what I'm talking about. So, let me just show you guys. Give me one second. So as you guys can see, I have my Geekbench 4 score here.
All right, so as you guys can see, I have the Gigvent 4 score right here on the left hand side. As you guys can see, the single core score 3939 and the multi core score is 19811. Now, the single core score is perfectly fine on Geekbench 4, but on the multi core, as you guys can see, like that's not good. Even a i7-7700K will outperform uh, 1700, uh, Ryzen 1700. So that's wrong, okay? So Geekbench 4 is not optimized for Ryzen 7 CPU yet, okay? As you guys can see, I managed to overclock the CPU at uh, 3.6 gigahertz, and that's not that's not right. So if you move from Geekbench 4 to Geekbench 3, as you guys can see, the single core score 3,866, and now that's the real score right there, multi core score 29,459. As you guys can see, Ryzen 7, 1700, and same 3.6 GHz. So I just wanna, I just wanna, you know, I just wanted to let you guys know that because I know most of you are out there maybe uh, running Geekbench 4 right now. And you're like, oh, what's wrong with the multi-core score? And I seen some videos out there like, you know, people really putting up and saying like, oh, that's the Geekbench score. That's not right. That's not the right Geekbench score. Geekbench, Geekbench 4 it's not optimized so what i'm thinking when amd was testing everything uh so i'm thinking uh, you know amd been working with ryzen 7 maybe four or five years so gigabench 3 was optimized for the uh ryzen uh, 7 uh cpus other than gigabench 4 is new so if you want to run all your tests run with gigabench uh 3 not gigabench 4 not optimized yet and real quick as you guys can see and I know most of you are thinking why do I have three fans running on the top okay first thing the first fan on the left hand side as you guys see, see on the top that one is cooling the power supply and these tools are just for hell of it okay basically uh, for like taking hot air out and also I took my uh, LED off uh, from the stock AMD cooler I have, as you guys can see right here. So the LED plug is uh, like un uh, unplugged, so it's not connected. And the dual wires thing I was telling you guys, as you guys can see. So basically, uh, this motherboard comes with dual wires. So if I if I manage to <laughs> break one wires, it's okay, because I can always. Um, use the other bias to fix the first bias and if i manage to manage to uh, break the second bias i can fix it using the uh you know first bias so i just want to give you guys quick tips and yes i'm working on benchmark guys let me just show you guys real quick so uh so you guys don't think that i'm just like doing whatever so as you guys can see right here okay I'm working on the benchmark the video should come uh, I should finish the video soon like I say I'm still working on the video so as you guys can see so I managed to overclock the Ryzen 7 1700 uh, with the stock cooler 3.8 gigahertz and then um, I managed to overclock my i7 7700k to 4.6 gigahertz because I really didn't like the temperature on the 7700k so Still, as you guys can see, the graphics score for the uh, 7700K, 20,424, and Ryzen 7, 1700, overclock, uh, the graphics score is around uh, 70,613. So, 7700K, as you guys know, still a, um, you know, PC gaming king. So, you just have to, uh, you, you know, there's just, just, just believe that but as you guys can see uh the ryzen uh, 1700 okay uh it's a great cpu guys you know i like right now i do all my work with the 1700 you know i do all my gameplay with the 1700 and i have my 1700 overclock to um let me show you guys uh let me run geekbench for you guys so as you guys can see um, so I have my uh, Ryzen 7 1700 overclocked to 3.6 gigahertz. That 
without touching the voltage that's with the stock voltage so that's without touching the voltage and as you guys can see that's why i don't recommend you guys buying a 1700x because look that's without touching the voltage okay at 3.6 gigahertz and watch the score why would you waste the money and get yourself a ryzen 7 1700x when you could get yourself uh 1700 and maybe get a better motherboard all right so as you guys can see without touching the voltage at 3.6 gigahertz 1561 cb that's really good okay so why should i waste my money and get a 1700x and as you guys can see my highest score there uh, at 3.8 gigahertz i managed to get 1652 1652 and the stock uh do i have the stock score new no. okay damn i never ran the cpu stock what's wrong with me so so yeah guys i just wanted to share with you guys you know that about you know about geekbench if you see uh you know any benchmark and you see a multi-core score is lower uh, don't worry because most of the reviewer they're uh, you know running the uh, Geekbench 4 not Geekbench 3 and Geekbench 4 is not optimized. That's why the multi-core score is lower and um, Also, like I say if you are planning on getting a, a Ryzen uh, Ryzen X370 motherboard get a motherboard with the dual BIOS so you can play around and if you do break the virus uh, you don't have to worry you can always flush the virus back using the other virus so that should be it guys stay tuned for the uh, benchmark video I know I'm making you guys wait but guys just stay tuned I'm trying to get myself a GTX 1080 and I want to uh, show you guys you know all my benchmark with the GTX 1080 not with the 1070 I'm not saying that 1070 is bad I just want to get a 1080 and I just want to uh, push the cut to the you know like push the CPU to the max and the card and see, you know, how this uh, Ryzen 1700 perform. If you guys have any other question, leave in the comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And stay tuned, guys. This is Sunny. I'm out. Peace.